Welcome to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the uh, biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting and give you my opinion on them. Stories like today, how to get free Netflix, Max, Paramount Plus, and Apple TV Plus, to name a few. There are many great ways to do this from things you're already paying for. Let's help you save some money on your streaming bill with this story, hopefully. Also, many other stories, including uh, YouTube TV having a glitch that's impacting power users, making it possible for them to access the DVR on their YouTube TV. We'll tell you what the glitch is, what's causing it, and what hope you have for it to be fixed. I've been hearing reports of this for some time, but recently the reports have been growing. I'm gonna tell you what you need to know about this. These stories and a whole lot more coming up here in a quick second. First though, if you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. We post videos like this every Monday through Friday and breaking news when it happens. Also, if you want to learn more about any of the stories I'm about to talk about, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment, um, I'll pull a link to each story there. Let's start off. So we, we've talked about this. We just did a story in a recent video about the growing number of core cutters who are cutting back on the number of streaming services they are paying for as the cost of this increases. Well, you probably know that there's many ways you can get streaming services for free from other things you pay for. Um, I, for example, get the Disney bundle for free from my Verizon internet uh, and cell phone plan. I also get free Paramount Plus from Walmart Plus. Now, recently, some others have come up, including DoorDash customers who pay for the free year subscription of DoorDash can get free ad-supported Max. There's a growing list of these out there highly recommend that you take a look around because i i've actually run into quite a few people who said well i pay for paramount plus and i pay for walmart plus well if you're a walmart plus customer you get paramount plus ad supported for free and for a small fee you can upgrade to um, get the ad free version of paramount plus a really nice deal there others like matt um you can get excuse me max from doordash if you're a doordash customer you get free ad supported max Pretty good deal. T-Mobile, of course, is very big into this. You get Major League Baseball's MLB.TV for free. You have to sign up in a narrow window, though, each year. You also get Netflix on them for free. Highly recommend that you take a look around. And maybe even if you're not currently a Max customer, I'm a DoorDash customer. I, I will admit, become a little too frequent deliverer of food to my house or office. Started off when I had a hip surgery, my wife and I started doing it. Same time we got Walmart Plus, kind of just kept doing it. But hey, now I got Max. I wasn't paying for Max earlier, but now I have it. So I'm gonna use it more often, and maybe rotate out something I'm paying for. These are all great services. My wife and I personally believe we save money by using Walmart Plus to deliver our groceries versus having um, the ability to, or versus going to the store and being tempted to buy stuff we didn't initially tend to. So take advantage of this, look around. I think most people watching this video probably don't even realize that they're eligible for a free service like this. If you know some other ways, I have a full list of them in the story and show notes down below. If you know some other free ways to get streaming services like this, leave me a comment, let me know. We'll add it to this list and hopefully help some people save money. All right, let's keep moving along. YouTube TV has a new glitch impacting customers. Now, for months now, I've been hearing reports of this from people, but recently it's really taken off. And there was a post on Reddit where a um, where it was reportedly, according to the Reddit users, confirmed by YouTube. In short, here the issue is: you, um, if you're a power user and you're recording like 8,000 or more episodes, sporting events, and the like, you may find yourself locked out of your um, library. It seems that YouTube never quite anticipated people to hit that high of a number, never tested that high. And once they get over about 8,000 recordings in your library of different TV shows, movies, sporting events, and the like, you suddenly find yourself locked out of your account, or at least locked out of your library. You can still watch live content. The home screen works, the live tab works, but the library tab stops working. Now, YouTube has said they are looking into this glitch and are working on fixing it. I think this is just a case that somewhere some numbers get crossed and because YouTube never tested that high, they didn't anticipate people hitting 8,000 recordings before the nine month mark where it automatically removes recordings older than nine months. I think this is kind of one of those things that they just didn't think people would record that much and they didn't test that high 
and now they need to figure out what's happening, as it seems that some power users who record a lot are starting to hit that limit. It's interesting. You know, these things happen all the time. Let's be honest. Um, the, it, you see it mostly with video games, right? You cannot anticipate everything somebody is going to do. And in video games, that's a much bigger thing. You can't, uh, you know, once you release a game, people are going to find glitches no matter how hard you are because they're doing stuff you didn't even think about. And it's kind of the same thing, I think, with YouTube TV here. They didn't anticipate people recording that much content and having it hang out in their DVR before the nine-month period was up. We'll see. All right, next up is a how-to guide. And I know there's people who are upset about these, but hey, we released a How to Watch the Republican Convention. So we've also released a How to Watch the Democratic Convention that's happening this week. If you're interested in seeing a bunch of options on how to watch the convention, check it out. Now, one note here, it's on so many free services. YouTube and all kinds of places will feed the raw feed of it. So you don't get the talking heads. You actually just hear what's happening on the convention floor. I personally like that because I really don't care what a talking head has to say about the convention. I just want to see the speeches at the convention. But there's many free ways on YouTube and other streaming services that are offering that. Um, but you can, of course, use one of paid service if you really want to get that MSNBC version or the Fox News version or whatever version it is. Hey, though, let me be honest. I know people are going to be upset we cover this. We cover both sides. We're going to give you options. I'm not here to tell you how to think. I'm just here to give you the information so you can make a decision on your own. All right, let's keep moving along here to our next story up. Peacock is announced some more original content and new content coming to Peacock this month. Uh, uh, James went out there and broke down some of the new stuff that's there already live and coming. They made an announcement recently. Check it out. Link in the show notes down below if you want to find out everything coming to Peacock. And then um, up before we get into the question of the day, Cox Communication is asking the Supreme Court um, to throw out its copyright judgment. Now, Cox is facing um, a basically a demand that it start cutting off people piracy. The, they're asking the Supreme Court, the music industry is telling Cox, you need to go and be more aggressive about shutting off people's internet service if they're downloading copyrighted content. Cox is telling the Supreme Court they should not be put in that position. That's kind of an issue. You know, they should not be put in the position of being the police for the music industry. It'll be interesting to see how the, the Supreme Court rules. Cox has already lost several major cases here um, and faces huge fines and penalties because of this. It is a legitimate question. At what point do private companies like Cox become responsible for enforcing legal laws to the point where if the copyright music says, hey, you, the consumer, I think you're copywriting or downloading copyrighted material, I'm gonna ask your internet service provider to cut off your internet service. This is gonna be a case that the Supreme Court probably will accept and should be an interesting case. And it kind of brings up the question, at what point do private companies have to um, police the internet versus at what point does the music industry and the police themselves have to do that. that. That's interesting. In day and age where internet access is so vital, you know, for both medical and safety and all kinds of stuff, it's no longer just about, you know, checking your email. It's now about your security cameras, your medical information, and more. What point is it acceptable to be cut off of from it because you downloaded a pirated music song? Leave me a comment. Let me know. Do you think Cox should be more aggressive in cutting people off? Or do you think the music industry is going too far in demanding that? All right, let's dive into the questions of the day. Now, if you have a question of the day, I got apparently I just closed it out, I gotta go back to it. Leave me a comment down below, start off with a question for Luke, and I'll do my best to answer them here in this video or in the comments, depending on what they are. Sometimes it's best answered there, sometimes it's best here. Today's one is about Fubo. Now, I did a breaking news video already on this, but Fubo won a stay that prevents Warner Bros. Discovery, Fox, and Disney from launching their new sports-focused streaming service as the lawsuit from Fubo goes against them. Now, um, one interesting thing here, it starts off saying, you know, basically Fubo won their lawsuit. No, I've heard that from many people. Fubo did not win the lawsuit. They won the first round here in the first Maybe you can consider it the second round because the judge didn't throw it out when Disney asked. 
So they want, the judge said this is a legitimate street or lawsuit, we're gonna move forward with it. The judge also said there is possibility of real damage if Fubo happens to win. So we're gonna put this streaming service on hold until we can decide if what actually happens with the case. So Fubo has not won this case. They just want to stay as the case goes forward. So just to be clear, Fox, Warner Brothers Discovery, and Disney could very well still win this lawsuit. All right, but it says, do you think Fubo will actually suffer once the streaming service does become a reality if it does? And that's a big question. So would Fubo actually suffer? And I do think yes. Would Fubo go under immediately? No. Now the problem Fubo has here is they promoted themselves as a sports streaming service. Uh, I think it's almost $80 now for the base package, plus you have things like an RSN fee and other stuff depending on what packages you're on. Now here comes Venue Sports with just sports, yes maybe not as many channels as Fubo, but just sports for significantly less money in the low $40 range um, with that. So will they suffer? Yeah, I do think some Fubo customers would swap over that's harm to them, especially since they've wanted to launch a similar service for a long time and the media companies have said, we're not gonna give you access to our content that way. You have to pay for not just ESPN, but the Disney Channel, not just Fox Sports, but Fox News. Because of that, they've been unable to do anything with it. We'll have to keep a close eye on this, but uh, I do think it is real. I do think Fubo did is facing potential bankruptcy if it does launch. Fubo themselves, I know a lot of people say, I'm the one doing this. Fubo released a memo in, in our original story, we linked to the source of that, where they said if it launches, they will become insolvent in the fourth quarter, be unable to pay their bills. Don't forget, Fubo has never made a profit. While they, they hope too soon, the path there still needs to be seen. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But yeah, I do believe that this service would pull a significant number of customers from Fubo, from YouTube, from cable TV companies. Question is how many? I do think it would be a noticeable amount. So would Fubo suffer damage? Yes. Will it be enough to make them insolvent? They seem to think so. They seem to think that that would force them into bankruptcy. You let me kind of let me know. Would you switch from Fubo to Venue Sports if it launched? Were you thinking about it? I think a good number of people were, to be honest with you. I don't think it'll be the one million they hope in the first year, but I do believe it'll be hundreds of thousands in the first year. Well, that's it for today. Hope you have a fantastic day. Sorry, my face had something on it in the last video. I'm on vacation, apparently learned a lesson there. I'm gonna double check myself in the mirror every day. That's what I get from going um, out and about in Florida and coming home and trying to record a video. I'll be better. As always, we try to get better every day. Until next time, take care, be safe. I'll be back again real soon.